Hardline Republicans have ousted U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy in a historic vote. It's unprecedented what has happened. We haven't seen this happen in late recent times at all. This is the first time ever that the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives has lost a no-confidence vote. 58-year-old speakers. Ouster is a result of a rebellion by a handful of ultra-conservatives. They were angry over McCarthy's reliance on Democrat votes to avert a government shutdown on Saturday. But did he really have even an option here? Absolutely. I think he's definitely bearing the brunt of it now. Right. Let's also listen into what McCarthy had to say after his removal. The one thing I will tell you is doing the right thing isn't always easy but it is necessary. I don't regret standing up for choosing governing over grievance. It is my responsibility. It is my job. I do not regret negotiating. Our government is designed to find compromise. I don't regret my efforts to build coalitions and find solutions. I was raised to solve problems, not create them. So I may have lost a vote today, but as I walk out of this chamber, I feel fortunate to have served the American people. I leave the speakership with a sense of pride, accomplishment, and yes, optimism. It was Florida Republican Matt Gates who filed the procedural tool on Monday to oust McCarthy. Today, McCarthy has been removed with a 216 to 210 vote. He was the leader of the Republican majority in the lower chamber of US Congress. Eight Republicans voted to remove him while other 210 wanted to keep him in the role. But all 208 Democrats in attendance voted against McCarthy. Now, earlier, Matt Gates had said that the only way McCarthy would be able to keep his job is if Democrats bail him out. It's the benefit of this country that we have a better Speaker of the House than Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy couldn't keep his word. He made an agreement in January regarding the way Washington would work, and he violated that agreement. We are $33 trillion in debt. We are facing $2.2 trillion annual deficits. We face a de-dollarization globally that will crush Americans, working class Americans. Kevin McCarthy is a feature of the swamp. While well, some Republicans are now reportedly saying that it is a setback for the Biden impeachment inquiry, which McCarthy had opened last month. He became the House Speaker in January after 15 rounds of voting in the chamber. Now, Gates and other hardliners had refused to support him back then as well. President Joe Biden has meanwhile said that the House should elect a new speaker swiftly due to urgent challenges that the nation faces. But Shivan, the question right now is that who could succeed McCarthy? Exactly. Who's next? That's the, you know, something that everyone's sort of thinking about now. Absolutely. Well, it is not just clear just yet. But as McCarthy has said that he will not run for the position again, here are some candidates who could succeed him. Number one, Steve Skillis. He's the number two House Republican. Then we have Tom Emmer, who is the majority whip, the third highest rank of the House. Then there is Jim Jordan, the chair of the House Judiciary Committee. Next up is Byron Donalds, hardline representative who was up against McCarthy in January as well. And last but not the least, Patrick McHenry. He is the chair of the House Financial Services Committee. And for more on this, our correspondent Susan Tarani tells us as to what's next for the House Speaker, former House Speaker, Kevin McCarthy. Take a listen. What happens next in the House of Representatives is unclear, mostly because something like this has never happened. By rule, the House needs to elect a Speaker. And until then, everything in the House is paralyzed and nothing can be done. Immediately after that vote to oust Kevin McCarthy, Patrick McHenry, the Republican from North Carolina, uh, became a Speaker pro tem. But again, until the House does not have a Speaker, nothing can be done. The Democrats floated the idea that they wanted Hakeem Jeffries, the minority leader, to become House Speaker. That's very unlikely considering the fact that the Republicans hold the majority. But this is what needs to happen. The House has 433 members. You must get a majority of the House to vote for a candidate by name in order for that individual to become Speaker. Well, Susan has been tracking all the developments. She also further explains what McCarthy's ouster means for the Republican legislation. Let's take a look at this. 
There is no doubt that today was a terrible day for the conservative movement and the Republican Party. Republicans who did not support McCarthy being ousted say that with every day without a House Speaker, they can't go after President Biden in their impeachment inquiry, they can't fight for border security, and they can't pass Republican appropriation bills. What's interesting is those a few Republicans uh, were criticizing McCarthy for making a deal with Democrats, first and foremost, but ultimately they worked with Democrats to oust McCarthy. The Democrats will no doubt use this situation as labeling the Republicans as a party of chaos. And that is noteworthy, notably, uh, in an election year. And for more on this story, we are now being joined by Mark Merowitz. He's joining us live from New York. Mr. Merowitz is a political commentator and also professor at State University of New York. Thank you so much for joining us on Beyond. Hi. Thank you. Right. Now, Mr. Merowitz, the House voted to eject Kevin McCarthy as leader of the House, making him the first speaker in history to ever be removed. Now, uh, the House is in a complete state of paralysis. So as, as we're seeing right now, uh, what course of action are we expecting going forward? Well, I mean, I think the Republicans are going to elect a new speaker. And uh, I think probably it will be Steve Scalise. Um, he's very, very popular. Uh, the, the one issue is that he has been ill with blood cancer, but he was interviewed and said he feels great. Uh, he's highly popular, uh, and I think he's the high. He's the best, uh, I think, candidate out there. Uh, you know, life will go on. Look, um, uh, McCarthy saved the country by um, preventing a government shutdown. Uh, McCarthy said that he could not look the American troops in the eye because he wouldn't pay, were not being able to be paid mm -hmm. for serving in the military. He just couldn't in good conscience do it. Uh, he worked something out, but whatever he worked out, he was determined, he was called a traitor by this uh, fringe group in the Republican Party. This bodes very badly for the House as an institution. Mm -hmm. And as you say, it's the first time that the full House has actually ejected the Speaker. But remember that McCarthy came in on 15 ballots, and it was incredibly tense and incredibly contentious. So his speakership was always in mm -hmm. uh, jeopardy. So, I mean, I think, you know, this is just more endemic of our politics. Yeah, it doesn't yes, come as a surprise that he's been ousted. It, I mean, there were enough hints for it happened, but it's definitely something that's happening for the first time that we've seen. McCarthy's ouster will bring legislative activity in the House to a halt. You know, those are now the pressing concerns. There is another government shutdown deadline looming November 17th. Do you feel Congress would extend funding by then? Or is there any way to avert that instead of seeing what we've seen right now again? Look, I mean, shutting the government looks terrible for both parties. Um, and the fact of the matter is we've been doing this over and over again. A year in, year out, we've got this problem with shutdown. And we've had some shutdowns. We had shutdowns in the past that went on for weeks. We've had them. And uh, the implications are very, very clear. The problem is that American politics right now is con complete turmoil. Think about it. The House Speaker was ousted. The former President of the United States has been sitting in court and has four different indictments. The House was, as you said, in the middle of an impeachment inquiry against the sitting President, mm -hmm. who's being accused of, uh, of, of, of uh, uh, transactions, improper transactions with his son. I mean, how is it that the American people are supposed to concentrate on the fact that we have a presidential election year coming up? We have turmoil up and down uh, Capitol Hill and up and down Washington, D.C. And whose fault is it? Well, we're very polarized. And I think that's the problem. If you're asking me how this gets solved, it doesn't get solved until people start working together. And frankly, in the good of the American people, and McCarthy was very clear in his press conference about that, he thought he did the right thing for America, and he did. But the very, very fringe Republicans basically um, tanked him, destroyed him. But remember, when he came in as House Speaker, they put in a provision that any member could call a vote like this. That was the deal they made in order to put him in on the 15th ballot. So somebody got up and said, motion to vacate the Speaker. And then they voted and they threw him out. 
And honestly, I think he really rose to the occasion. I think the way he explained it in his press conference was very, very persuasive. And he did the right thing for the American people. And that's going to be the legacy here. He's determined he's a traitor to the Republican together. fringe. They need to come together hero. to move forward. That's exactly, you know, that's I'm taking that's the bigger takeaway Absolutely. from what you're saying. Right, Mark. Mark also shed some light as to who do you see as a top contender to replace McCarthy now? Do you see Steve Scalise replacing McCarthy in future? Absolutely. Uh, Patrick M McHenry is a McCarthy ally. Uh, and he is the inter you know, interim speaker, as was stated earlier. Scalise is enormously, enormously popular. I don't think that Jim Jordan or, uh, or um, the, uh, some other contenders really have a chance. I think Scalise is the main contender for this. He's very popular, and I think he will be able to work well. By the way, if you listen to the House debate, you know, all the, most of the Republicans got up and said, we like Kevin McCarthy. We believe he's a great speaker. He's tried to do a great job. What is very tragic in this, and I mean tragic, is that all the Democrats got together to kick McCarthy out. And I think that is shameful. After he went ahead and worked with the Democrats to avert the shutdown of the government, the Democrats turned on him. And who did they ally with? The eight fringe Republicans. Mm -hmm. I think that's horrible, and I think it sets a terrible precedent for behavior, right political right behavior in the House. Mark, thank you so much for joining in on the broadcast with your views. Always a pleasure to hear from you and have you here on thank the show you. with us. Right. Quite amazing, quite amazing. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you so much.